Hi everybody, you know AI art can be used for many things. Many use it also to create some assets for video games they are creating. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create kind of a Hearthstone inspired type of card, uh, which with animation and bring it to life with sounds and everything and make something really cool. Maybe inspire you to create your own video game using assets from AI generated images. So again, uh, if you are talented, you create it yourself, but of course it's very time consuming, or you can go and buy it from stock photography, or you can get, uh, well, generate images using AI text to image like Midjourney, Dali, uh, Stable Diffusion, and others. So first of all, let's take a look at image and how I turned it into, I added a little intro again with Hearthstone type of card, uh, but again, just the frame, the inside, the image and the animation were created using Midjourney and motion leap all right so let's take a look so this is the art generated using a mid journey and now for the final card info i smell human So as you can see, it looks beautiful, right? So if you are creating games and you want to create some really cool cards uh, with this, and again, uh, the frame itself uh, is a Hearthstone one, but again, just for illustration purposes, and uh, Art of the Night uh, was generated using Mid Journey and the animation using Motion Leap. So let me show you how I managed to get and do it, and hopefully you get inspired and maybe use some art in your game if you want to create something and you want really beautiful art and animations let me show you how it is done all right so how it is done well first of all we go to mid journey text to image ai uh, if you're on youtube mid journey it makes you to check out my playlist on my channel so you can see and learn how to use it and basically i wanted a fantasy card and uh, try to using keywords like uh, fantasy uh, dramatic background, dramatic lighting, atmospheric, and other type of uh, descriptions uh, to give it, you know, a more well dramatic look. And I wanted a knight riding on a horse, uh, using a sword, something in that direction. And I generated many images, and uh, until I got something that I really liked. And as you know, same with any other uh, creation process, you gotta try many things until you see something that you really like, and from that point on. Uh, you're gonna try to create from it. The thing is with AI again that you're gonna get many different images But in mid journey you have the option to create a variation or use the same seed to try to create something similar to what you already got And basically I was using variation once I found a few images that I really liked So again, I continue generating again You can choose to generate something cute or whatever, you know, you want or the thing of your uh, trading card game uh, keep in mind that some of the elements like the lighting are not necessary because I actually prefer not to have them. I'm going to show you soon, I'm going to re remove it in Photoshop, but I prefer generating with them because it also affects the atmosphere and the other lighting in the image. But uh, depends on the image, uh, the one that I chosen, I actually remove the lighting because I'm going to add the lighting, animated it inside motion. All right? So this is the image that I eventually chosen. I create different variation of it after it uh, finished generating. And you can see there's a lighting there, which is uh, really cool. But you can see the lighting also adds when you generate an image like that, the atmosphere with the lighting and the colors are already there. But in Photoshop, in a moment, I'm going to remove it. Right? So that's the image. I want to animate the sky. I don't want the lighting. If I bring into motion leap the lighting, it will just make a motion of it and I don't want that. Uh, so basically I'm just uh, removing it now in Photoshop. That will replace it beautifully. And just remove the lighting so it won't actually be there in the image. I still like the overall effect, the contrast. 
between the dark and the light area where the lighting is actually there but we're gonna remove it now so it won't actually be an image you need to be more precise you can zoom in by the way in photoshop be more precise with that you just go over roughly you don't have to be very very accurate and go to edit yeah, just creating another layer by the way always uh, love having a backup and content aware removal and that's it you see beautifully removed right uh, other than this of course there are many things that they want to do uh, sometimes you want to correct the contrast the colors and uh, different things to make the image pop in this case the, it just was a bit too dark and uh, you know the horse and the knight are you know the main thing here so I want to kind of uh, light it up so I did uh, uh, there are different techniques to do it uh, you can change the levels and apply to a different layer uh, but if you do anything you need to separate the horse, the horse first from the background right? now there are different ways to create it I use find edges as a filter and create invert control I and then uh, change the opacity a bit to bring up the details you can use also sharpening as well uh, so there are different ways to play around with it but the idea is to make sure that the subject is uh, pretty well lit not too much I still enjoy seeing the high contrast and the dark horse so that's what I'm actually doing here I'm doing stylize find edges I control I to invert and this is too much of course but then I'm just gonna use the opacity slider just add it just a bit all right you can do the same thing when you do the leveling and uh, if you want to apply only to part of it you can see that the bottom part the legs the back legs are have some kind of a well, it's already sharp there and dot and have lots of uh, information so basically you can use masking in order to mask it so it only appears in part that's what I'm doing adding a mask uh, uh, using a black control I on the mask to make it black and then use a white brush in order to go over and just make sure or in this case a gradient from black to white in order to make sure that only part of it is actually applying the, the layer all right so more details still dark as I wanted it to be and looks pretty nice all right uh, uh, I wanted also to add a bit of uh, glow to the head to make better separation because the part of the head of the horse is just dark and the area there is also dark just a bit of uh, glow there in order to create better separation again it doesn't have to be perfect but just sharing some of the things that I do in order to make it the way I want it to be you're probably going to do much better than me but you know just sharing some of the processes uh, after that uh, I can use the dodge tool in order to brighten up lighten up areas in the image uh, this again to have an extra brightening on areas that I want to be more you know, have a better contrast there so just do it lightly and until I'm satisfied with what I get all right next we need the frame now there are different ways to get it you can go to stock photography and search for frame for your cards in this demonstration for illustration purposes just to use one from hearthstone you can go to graphicriver.net you can use behance if you have adobe cloud and you can find some free there uh, again there are plenty of them if you're taking it seriously for your game make sure to check out the paid one they are very very beautiful and good one they can be great for your theme this is from graphicriver.net as you can see the prices are just right you can find plenty of them there all right so just something that you can search for yourself and find out even you know other ones that are better fit for you now for motion leap well motion leap are bring the image all right keep in mind i bring it without the frame i want to control a better control of the workflow and make editing later on so don't bring it with the frame all right so just the image and then I use pathing. In this case, I put the pathing to the right to create a motion like the horse is moving to the left. Uh, just a bit again, it's not like the horse will be animated, uh, maybe in another AI. <laughs> and uh, basically, uh, I actually corrected it and moving to the right. And you put on course in Motion Leap. This is an app, by the way, available for iOS and Android. It's a mobile app. And I just put the pathing in the direction that they want to be animated as you can see at the bottom right there's a button there play button if you play it you will play it 
Now we can do it while playing, or we can just stop it and uh, uh, and then put the pathing and the encores. Now the encores are used to kind of uh, put a limit to where the animation actually affect the area. And of course, I don't want the horse to have motion on the horse, nor the knight, nor the weapon. So I need to make sure that they put encore points. There's also freezing option, by the way, available, which you can use to kind of mask the area, which when it's masked, actually, the passing won't actually affect that area. All right. Uh, so basically, I'm using it also for the weapon. You can zoom in, by the way, by pinching and a more precise control over where you put the encores or you do the freezing up to you. And uh, of course, some of the areas that I want to animate doesn't have to be related to the background. I wanted, for example, the clothing part to be animated slightly. Same goes to the back of the horse. Uh, so I did it as well. As you can see, I'm pressing play and you can see that it's actually moving. You can also control the speed and other things. There are many ways you can actually play around with it. So animation. And here I wanted the clothing or whatever this one is. <laughs> Uh, to be animated as well. Keep in mind that if you animated clothing, give it a bit more room. Don't try to put anchor points too close. Otherwise, just look that look like the texture is being animated rather than it's kind of a the clothing is flowing. So what I did was actually removing the encores there and just give it more breathing room to kind of animate. And then it looks uh, looks really nice. Looks beautiful. Maybe I should have just animated just a bit further. Uh, thinking about it right now, but again, this is just for demonstration. I didn't try to perfect anything here. Now, when we press play, you can see that the animation is moving slightly more towards the outer area. It looks like it's kind of a flowing in the wind. All right. That's the effect, more or less, that I want to achieve. I still need to do some fixing, you see, on the left side. Some anchoring there. But it looks pretty nice. I was pretty satisfied with the result there. We can always do a bit more to make things better. But again, I didn't try to perfect anything here. Just kind of a toy around with the things with the look. Looks nice. Now for the visual effect. This is the most fun part, right? Adding visual effects uh, to make things really, really pop. You can, if you have sky in the image, you can override it because the algorithm knows to detect in the sky area. But I tried different things, I didn't like what I've seen and eventually I decided just to stay with the original which actually looks really really nice. You can change the opacity to make it kind of uh, you know merge in a slightly again but overall I just didn't like the options there for this particular card that I wanted to create. I also added a bit of smoke I wanted the kind of but again it's not I wanted something else like the horse the shape of the horse being smoke but I can't create it here. Uh, anyway I play with it so the direction would be there. Also mask it with a brush so it won't actually appear coming out of the night. Uh, just the horse. Yeah, it was a nice touch. Not perfect, unfortunately. There's not enough creation options here to make me create really what I want, but overall it was actually pretty good. Now next I went to the items and put items for the lighting. Keep in mind I want you over everything, but basically you have the option to put different items like uh, plants and effects and lots of cool stuff. So I put lots of lighting there and I wanted also fire for the weapon. The problem is that there is a limit uh, how much you can actually put. I think like four of them, uh, unfortunately. But they put uh, two lighting, I think, the effect of the fire and also those uh, flying, I don't know, like falling stars. I actually changed it a bit after that. Uh, the fire looks pretty cool. So this is a nice effect. So again, adding those, very, very easy to do in Motion Lip. The also option to add overlays like rain, snow, and other stuff. If it fits your thing, use it. You can change the opacity to make it more prominent or less prominent, depending on what you want to achieve. Yeah, after that, more changes, a bit of more animation to the hair of the horse, uh, some fine tuning. Again, I can spend a lot of time with each one. A bit back for the tail, whatever this tail is. <laughs> and uh, yeah, overall, again, I was happy with the final result. And well, just export it in 2K. You can do it in 4K as well.
Now keep in mind, DaVinci Resolve, I use it in order to create, uh, you know, the intro. You don't need it. Basically, you're already done and you have the video and you can use the video to add it into your uh, game ID that you're developing, whether it's Unity, Unreal Engine, and then uh, have the frame alone and you're going to add the text probably afterwards. You have more dynamic control over what text you're adding and the values. So again, I just did it in order to kind of demonstrate, give you an illustration for inspiration, but basically you don't need, you already have the video, you can bring it as an asset and use it in your game. So you can see me just playing around, masking things, you know, in DaVinci Resolve just to create an intro for you. But again, you can also use other software if you want to add even more effects like After Effects, there's so many other tools that you can use. I just show you a very simple workflow using Midjourney in motion leap and uh, you can use acid that you can buy for the frame and then create a beautiful card that is animated and of course you can add later on in your gaming uh, software music sound effects and everything you need for your game but you can see that the process is very fast so if you need to create maybe you know dozens even hundreds of cards it's going to be pretty fast for you right i can create i don't know like 20 cards uh, in a day if I just sit on it and you know very very quickly because the workflow is very fast so that's why if you are thinking about creating a game doesn't matter which one and you need art and you want it to be animated maybe for a legendary card or, you know whatever uh, you can use this process to create it and do it very very fast so this is it I hope you find this one useful and inspiring if you have a question let me know if you have tips other things that you can give others uh, to create amazing arts for tri uh, trading card games let us know in the comment section below thanks for watching everybody consider maybe subscribing and give this one a little like and i see you very soon on the next one thanks for watching